Hi friends, welcome back to Edipedia World. Last lecture we was an introductory lecture on machines where we saw the definition of machine and uh, we were introduced to certain terminologies about a machine. This chapter we will focus on the principles of principle of a machine. We will find the relationship between the mechanical advantage, the velocity ratio and the efficiency and then we will see some numerical. Let us start with today's lecture. We have seen that we apply a effort on a machine and as a result of that the machine applies a force on the load. So basically when we are applying a effort on the machine we are doing a work on the machine and when the machine is applying a force on the load it is doing a work on the load. So there is a energy input to the system via the effort and there is a energy output by the system through the application of uh, through the work done on the load. So there is an energy input energy input this is via effort and there is an energy output this is via the load now by the principle of machine or broadly speaking by the conservation of energy we know that energy cannot be created so the input energy will be equal to the output energy but that is actually an ideal scenario that happens in case of a ideal machine let us see ideal machine ideal machine for an ideal machine the energy input input is equal to energy output so all the energy that is put into the system the same amount of energy is given out by the system but what happens in real situation or an actual machine actual machine is that there are there is a loss of energy due to frictional losses or the mass of the device itself there can be multiple factors because of which there is energy loss so in case of an actual machine the energy input energy input is always more than the output energy why because there are several losses in the machine as a result the whole energy which is given to the system cannot be extracted from the system now what are some of the reasons for this energy loss some of the reasons one is frictional loss then there are moving parts which are not not smooth so that is a frictional loss then there is mass of the rope maybe or the pulley maybe or the uh, gear system so there is a consideration of mass and uh, then all the parts are not perfectly rigid so there is a loss of energy due to change of shape since they are not perfectly rigid bodies now we have seen that our actual machine the energy input is greater than energy output conversely what we can say alternatively what we can say is that the efficiency of an actual machine is less than 100% why 
because energy efficiency is the work output by work input or the energy output by energy input since this is less than this so efficiency is less than 1 as a fraction or less than 100 percent in terms of percentage next let us see the relationship between efficiency let me do it by a different color relation ship between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio we know that the work input let's uh, finalize some of the terminologies what are the terminologies that there is a effort e which is causing a displacement de for the effort in a time t and there is a load l l is the load which is displaced by dl over the same time interval t. Now if we see the work input, work input, let me write it as work in, then the work input is by the effort and the displacement of the effort. We know that the work is force into displacement in the direction of force. So work input will be E times DE and work output will be, let me write this, OUT will be the work done on the load, that is load into multiplied by the displacement of the load. So force into displacement is the work output. Now we know that efficiency is work out upon work in, which can be written as work out is load in times displacement of load and the work input is effort times displacement of effort. I'm taking this over here. Let me write efficiency is equal to if I separate out load by effort load upon effort and if I separate out this displacement of load by displacement of effort we know that load by effort from our previous lecture is mechanical advantage and we know that displacement of load rather displacement of effort by displacement of load is velocity ratio so this is reciprocal of velocity ratio if we replace the thing we can write that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage upon velocity ratio which can be alternatively written as mechanical advantage of a machine is efficiency times the velocity ratio so this is our relation between mechanical advantage, efficiency and velocity ratio. So a perfectly ideal machine will have efficiency equal to 1 and in such a scenario the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio will be same. Therefore the relation between mechanical advantage and velocity ratio is that they are same for an ideal machine and for any actual machine since the efficiency is less than 1 so 
the mechanical advantage will be less than the velocity ratio. So another take home from here is that since efficiency is either equal to 1 or less than 1, mechanical advantage will always be less than or equal to velocity ratio. When will it be equal? In case of an ideal system, in case of an ideal machine. But for all actual machine, the mechanical advantage will be less than the velocity ratio. I hope this gives a good idea about the relation between mechanical advantage efficiency and velocity ratio. Now we will see a simple example to cement our understanding about machines. This question says that a uh, effort of 50 Newton is applied through 1 meter and uh, it moves a load of 100 Newton through 25 centimeter. So the effort applied is 50 Newton and the distance moved by effort is 1 meter. It moves a load of 100 Newton by a distance of 25 centimeter. 25 centimeter is equivalent to 25 by 100 that is 0 0.25 meter. Now we need to initially find the mechanical advantage. We know that definition of mechanical advantage is load by effort. The load is 100 Newton. So we write 100 Newton and the effort is 50 Newton. So we get a mechanical advantage of 100 upon 50 which is true. So the machine has a mechanical advantage true. Secondly, we are asked to find the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio, we know velocity ratio is the distance or the displacement moved by the effort upon the d displacement by load. The displacement moved by effort in the numerical is 1 meter. This effort is moved by 1 meter whereas the load is moved through 0 0.25 meter. This gives us a velocity ratio of 4. So we see that we have a mechanical advantage 2 and we have a velocity ratio 4. From these two information we can immediately conclude that the machine is not an ideal machine. Why? Because if the machine were an ideal machine, then the mechanical advantage should have been equal to the velocity ratio, which is not in the case at hand. Now let us confirm our uh, feeling that the efficiency is not 100%. Let us calculate how much is the efficiency exactly. The third part is asking us to find the efficiency but not by using the relation mechanical advantage is equal to efficiency into velocity ratio. We ultimately actually need to show that that actually holds in the case. We need to find the efficiency by finding the work input and the work output. What is work input? Work input will be effort times the displacement by effort. So it will be E cross ED and that is 50.1 which is 50 Joule. Since both are in SI unit, the unit of 
work will be in joule. Similarly, the work output, how much work is done by the machine on the load, that is load times distance mode by load, which is 100 25 centimeter that is 0.25 meter and that turns out to be 25 joule so the work input the work which is we are doing on the machine is 50 joule but the work which we are getting out of the machine is only 25 joule we know that the efficiency is work by the machine or the work output divided by the work done on the machine or the work input. That turns out to be 25 by 50 which is 0 0.5. In terms of percentage it will be 50 percent. So we get the efficiency as 0 0.5. Now the final fourth part is asking us to show what we basically just proved in our, in our lecture that mechanical advantage is efficiency times velocity ratio. Does this hold in this question? Let's find out. What is efficiency? Efficiency is 0 0.5. What is velocity ratio? Velocity ratio is 4. So efficiency times velocity ratio for our question is 0 0.5 times 4 which is equal to 2 and indeed mechanical advantage is 2. So efficiency times velocity ratio turns out to be the mechanical advantage. I hope this question gives a much better and clearer idea about all the different terminologies we have read over the last two lectures. With this question, I will conclude today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will be studying about our first machine, that is levers. Till then, have a great day. Goodbye.